read Psalm 126, 5 through 6. It says, those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So this is the message today. When you go out and you sow, you sow seed, Jesus said that your life is going to be like a seed. If you try to hold on to it, he said you're going to lose it, and then you're going to have nothing to show for it. But unless a seed falls into the ground and dies then it can't produce any good fruit. It can't produce a harvest. But if it falls into the ground and dies, then it will multiply many times over what what that original little seed was. This is a spiritual principle that God has given to us. And it's one that God wants to remind you of today. If you are in a place of weeping, if you are in a place of frustration or disillusionment today, what God is telling you is that you still have a purpose and all you have to do right now is hold on. You don't actually have to find a solution to make yourself feel better. All you have to do is remember that God told you that there was going to be a moment like this in your life. Maybe it doesn't look like what you thought a cross would look like. Maybe it's messier than that. Okay. Maybe some of the pain is your own fault. Listen, the Bible says that God works all things together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. And he knew that the people he was talking to were imperfect people who would make some of their own messes. But he still loves you and he still has a plan for you. And all you have to do to reap that good thing at the end of the day when this is all over is keep on sowing. Okay, it's okay if you're crying. It's okay if you're going out to sow with tears. It's okay if you can't see how you'll ever have any comfort again. It's okay if you're disillusioned. It's okay if you can't even make sense of it all. But in the process, as you are crying, remember to keep on sowing. What does that mean? It means give. Give. Don't forget to give. Don't stop giving. You may say, that's how I got here. You know, I was... I was too trusting. I was too giving. And that's why I ended up here. Don't stop giving. Never stop. That's what this says. Don't grow weary of doing good because in due season, you will reap if you do not give up. God said something to the Israelites. It was a grave warning. It was a grave warning to us. He said that they were like a woman in childbirth, that they were going through all this pain because they had turned to idols and they had turned to serving themselves and going their own way instead of going God's way and serving God. And that was leading them to destruction. And he said that they're going through all of this pain, all this crying. But at the end of the day, they were going to give birth to a whirlwind. They were going to reap a whirlwind. They were going to give birth to nothing but wind. If you're a woman, you really understand this. If you're in that moment of childbirth, there is no pain that is greater and there's nothing else that you can see but the pain. It, it, it occupies the entirety of your vision when you're in that moment. But when you're in that moment, just remember this, you don't want it to be for nothing. So even then, give. Don't stop. Even if it doesn't make sense, even if you don't have any hope, give. Just remember that you wouldn't be in this kind of pain if there wasn't something coming. Okay? Something is going to break forth. Something is going to grow up. There is going to be a harvest. The question is, what will it be? Don't go through all of that pain for nothing and, and find yourself at the end of the day giving birth to wind or maybe even to a whirlwind that's going to cause even more destruction. All you have to do to keep your harvest intact while you're going through the pain is remember, keep on sowing. So I'm going to read to you, since we're talking about money and we are wrapping up our series on money this week, um, I want to read to you 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11, because it tells you the power of continuing to give and giving with the right heart. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, um, verses 6 through 11, and this is going to be our scripture reading for the day. It says, remember this, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. 
And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This is a promise, and if you read this in several different versions, it becomes very clear. It's not saying he'll make you rich as in he'll make everybody in the church rich because it says that there would be rich people in the church and poor people in the church, and the poor people, the ones who had renounced their possessions, they were going to be the leaders because they were the ones who knew how to walk by faith, and that those who were rich would take a more humble position because they did have all this worldly wealth, and they would just take joy in the fact that they could be very generous and they're giving for the kingdom, okay? This is saying um, that you will be enriched in every way that you need to keep on sowing. And that's what it says, that the God that supplies you with everything you need, he supplies the seed to sow and bread for food. He's going to give you something to give, and he's going to keep taking care of of your needs. Now, you know, you may have many things in your heart that are still unfulfilled and you may have um, needs right now, but God has promised that he is going to bind up the brokenhearted. And he told you, it's not that he's not providing for your needs. He's going to provide for all of your physical needs. As Jesus promised every day, he said that he would provide for you like he provides for the sparrows. He takes care of them. He's going to take care of you. He told you that before the harvest, what's going to come? Before you reap in joy, what's going to come? Tears. When you are sowing many times, it, it means that you're dying. There's a part of you that's really dying. And Jesus said that when he died on the cross, he, he compared himself to that seed falling into the ground. That is not an easy process. He told you that moment was coming. And he says, you know, in another place, see, I told you beforehand. I told you beforehand, why? So that you won't give up. It says, if you just keep on sowing, don't grow weary in doing good. Keep on sowing and don't give up. You'll reap that harvest. So this is the word of the Lord to you today. If you want to come against those strongholds of sin and all the things that have happened to you that, that bring that confusion, that maybe allow the enemy into your life, if you want to really come against the kingdom of Satan, even while you are weeping, even while you're hurting, keep on sowing. Whatever seed he has supplied you with, maybe it's a little, maybe it's a lot, but you know, he said that when you only have a little bit of seed to sow, that if you give that, like the widow who only had a mite, and she gave it to God, he said that that counts for more with God because it is actually worth more to you than, you know, the thousands of dollars that some other person is coming in and giving when they just have, you know, a million. It's, it's not the same kind of sacrifice. So don't measure it that way. But instead, look at what God has supplied you with today and keep on sowing. It may hurt. You may be crying. Keep on sowing. And when you do that, you are really going to the root. You know, this is what God likes to do. We like to fight um, in the flesh. We like to fight against other people, blame other people. But God says that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against the powers and principalities of this dark world. That it's those things that are holding all of us captive, including the people that hurt us. And they are actually the prize that God, that Jesus Christ came to redeem, that he came to win. And many times we find ourselves like Peter, you know, swinging our swords at the people. But if you want to get down to the root of sin, like John told the Pharisees, he said, you know, God's going to cut down every tree that doesn't bear good fruit. And the ax is already at the root of the trees. Look, when God comes to do battle, he does not mess around. He doesn't go just picking up off the fruit, the bad fruit off the tops of the trees. He goes right to the root. He lays that ax right to the root. And you can do that too, because the Bible says the love of money is the root of every kind of evil. The root. Anytime it tells you what the root is, you need to pay attention. And most people do exactly the opposite with that scripture, especially because they don't want it to be about money. 
right? Well, that's just the love of money. And we fool ourselves into thinking that we don't have the love of money. But if there's evil in our lives, every kind of evil has that root. It's the root of the spirit of this world. And so if we want to really pack a spiritual punch, then what we do is we give. We give, first of all, if we have money to give, we give money, okay? Because money is the root. A lot of times we want to say, well, I give other things besides money. I give my talent. I give my time. Those resources are important. And those are ways that you show love to people. But remember that the Bible doesn't say that the root of every kind of sin is your talent. It says it's money, okay? It's the love of money. It doesn't call your talent unrighteous, filthy talent or unrighteous, filthy time. It's unrighteous, filthy money or mammon. So don't let the enemy kind of, you know, divert your eyes from the root, okay? This is how you're going to defeat the enemy while you are in this place of mourning and weeping and crying. And you may not feel like you are worth very much because other people have not loved you like they should. You may not feel like you really have any great purpose because you're, you know, you don't have it together. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. There's no temptation that's befallen you that is not common to every person, okay? You are just another human being walking on this planet, and that's exactly who Jesus came for, and that's exactly the kind of person that Jesus uses, the one who will just keep on believing the promise even in their moment of greatest pain. You are getting ready to bear something that is so precious, like a woman in childbirth. You are getting ready to reap a great harvest with joy in all of those pains and all of that and all of that bondage and everything that's happened that is not from God, all of that will be burned up in the fire and washed away with the ashes. And all that will be left is a glorious, shining, golden harvest. It's going to be a lot of souls out there that have been affected by your good things that you continue to do. They may not appreciate it now, but God is telling you that it will be appreciated. And soon, remember, Jesus is coming back. Even if you die before he comes back, you don't have that much time on this planet. So if you're going to be in pain, if you're going to be crying, if you're going to be going through that, then don't let it be for nothing. Remember that you can continue to build on what God has given you and to put something in that treasury in heaven by simply continuing to give. Give what you have and God will increase that and make it into a great harvest. He has a purpose for you. He loves you. You are an important part of his plan. You're an important part of his kingdom. And don't you forget it.